Okay, this is the KwaZulu Natal September 2017. It was the common test for KwaZulu Natal, and it's a very nice chemistry calculation question. It says consider the following balanced chemical equation 2x solid plus 6 hydrochloric acid aqueous goes to 2xCl3 aqueous plus 3 hydrogen. So, first of all, this is a redox reaction. We know this is a redox reaction because here the metal is going from the metal to the metal ion on the other side. So this is sometimes considered in the acid-base reactions, but it's actually a redox reaction. Okay. And then the other thing about this reaction that's interesting is on the other side there is a Cl3. Now usually anything that needs three anions to balance it, anytime you see a Cl3, or anything that needs three anions, I want you to think of aluminium because aluminium is the most common thing that pairs to have three anions to match the cation because aluminium is one of the only things with an Al3 plus cation. There aren't that many other cations that have three. So even though you don't know what uh, X is, if you see a Cl3 on the other side, it must be paired, must be three chloride ions paired with an uh, cation that has a charge of plus three, and the most common suspect for that is aluminium. So before we've even looked at the question, my mind is already going, okay, maybe this is aluminium, this Mr. Mysterious Metal X is aluminium because it has obviously a three positive charge. So then it says to you, during the reaction, 0 0.405 grams of metal X reacts completely. So this reacts completely is important because that means we can use the molar ratios from the balanced equation. So it reacts completely with hydrochloric acid to produce 5.04 cubic centimeters of hydrogen gas at STP. Only when you see STP or the words molar gas volume, can you use N equals V over Vm? So this is a warning sign that this is a, a going to need N equals V over Vm. Okay, so it says to you, calculate the number of moles of hydrogen produced at STP. So because we've got STP, we know we're using Avogadro's law, and we want to know the number of moles of hydrogen gas produced at STP, so when we use this formula, we know that the molar gas volume is going to be 22,4. Where did I get the 22,4? From your data sheet, it's the molar gas volume at standard temperature and pressure, which is what STP stands for. Okay, so in the question, they gave you a volume of gas. This 504 cubic centimeters is a volume of gas, but we always need to remember that there are 1,000 cubic centimeters in one cubic decimeter, and the molar gas volume here is given in cubic decimeters on the data sheet, so we must match our units. So this must be cubic decimeters, 504 cubic centimeters is going to be 504 divided by 1,000 cubic decimeters which is 0 0.504, or if you don't like to write divided by 1,000, you can say 504 times 10 to the negative 3, because mathematically that's the same as dividing by 1,000. And if you're good at mental arithmetic, you're just going to write 0 0.504 using your brain. But sometimes you should get your calculator to check you, because otherwise you're going to lose your marks. So if you put this number in your calculator, you will end up with the number of moles of hydrogen being 0 0.0225. Now it is exactly 0 0.225 in your calculator. So I do not recommend rounding this off. This is a pretty exact number. And so if you leave it as that, it will help you for the rest of the calculations. So if you, because can you see here, I've got three numbers that um, are not a zero. So this is pretty much what we would like if we wrote this in scientific notation. It would be 2,25 times 10 to the negative 2 moles, which would be uh, the correct scientific way to write it. And then this in scientific notation has two decimal places, which is kind of what we sometimes look for in the chemistry calculations. Okay, then it says to you, in the next part, how many hydrogen atoms are present in the hydrogen gas produced. 
what you have to realize is this question is asking you about atoms and this hydrogen gas is a molecule. So what they are asking you is how many atoms. Now remember when we're dealing with these calculations, this N, this N, what does it stand for? It stands for number of moles. But we have to remember that one mole of anything, okay, will contain Avogadro's number, okay? Contains 6,02 times 10 to the 23. So when they are asking you how many atoms are present, you need to convert the moles to the atoms using the equation N equals N over Na. They are asking you in this question for this big N over here. And remember, we're going to get Na off the data sheet. And we have little n, the number of moles, okay? But the thing is, we know that the number of moles of hydrogen gas, which is a molecule, is this 0, 0,0225, which we just calculated in the first part of the question, okay? But one mole of hydrogen gas is actually two moles of hydrogen atoms because remember hydrogen is a diatomic molecule so for every one mole of hydrogen it contains two moles of hydrogen atoms so if we have 0, 0,0225 moles of hydrogen which is the molecules okay h2 the diatomic molecule we are going to have twice as much hydrogen atoms because two atoms for one molecule so if we put that in our calculator we end up with 0, 0,045 atoms, moles of atoms. Whoops, this is not atoms, it is moles of atoms. So this is the N of hydrogen atoms, and this is the N of hydrogen molecules. And they didn't ask me the molecules, they didn't say how many hydrogen molecules are present, they said how many hydrogen atoms? So I have 0, 0,045 moles of atoms. And that I remember a mole is like a dozen, 12 eggs in a dozen, 6,02 times 10 to the 23 particles in a mole. So we put Avogadro's number on the bottom here. And then if you plug this in your calculator, you will end up with a nice large number. 2,709 times 10 to the power of 22 atoms, okay? So this question is good for teaching you the difference between an atom and a molecule. Now it says to you, determine the molar mass of metal X. So in the question, they are telling you how many grams of metal X, okay? So normally we go to the periodic table and we find molar, ma uh, molar mass from the periodic table. But in this question, they've given you a mass of metal X, which in our formula is little m. And we like to use this formula, n equals little m over big M, okay? But now they've said to us, Little m is 0, 0,405, find big M, okay? So at this point, the problem is we don't know what is n in this formula, and we're trying to find big M. So there must be a way to find n, and of course it's easy. You just go and look at the coefficients of the balanced equation. We know the number of moles of hydrogen, and if you know the number of moles of any one thing in the equation, you can find the moles of everything else. So the balanced equation tells us two moles of X will react with three moles of hydrogen. But did we have three moles of hydrogen? No. We had 0, 0,025 moles of hydrogen. Now, if you rounded this number off, the last part of the question goes... A little bit more difficult you don't get the exact answer but if you put in 0, 0,0225 
That is how many moles of hydrogen we had, and we know this from how much volume of gas was produced. So now we can use this moles of hydrogen to find how many moles of X. So we're going to multiply by the 2, 0, 0, 0,0225 X, and then we are going to divide by 3. Well, it's not really X. We don't need the X over there. Okay, so we multiply by the 2 and then divide by the 3. So if you put that in your calculator, the moles of X is going to be, going to be, what was it? 0, 0,015. Okay, so the mole ratio is telling you how many moles of X were formed by doing that little ratio calculation. And so now we can come back and go 0, 0,015 moles of X. They weigh 0, 0,405 grams, which is what the question told us. And from there, we can find that the molar mass of X is going to be 27. Okay, so the molar mass of X is 27 grams per mole. And from there, it says 9.1.4, identify metal X. So you go to your periodic table, and there on the periodic table on aluminium is 27. So X is aluminium metal. Okay, so we just identified it by finding the molar mass. So that was the first part of the question. The second part of the question is just as nice. The second part of the question, when I gave this to you in your test, I changed the magnesium to calcium, but it makes no difference. So this question is a concentration question. So anytime you see concentration of a solution, an aqueous solution, okay, you are going to use C equals N over V. Concentration is the number of moles per unit volume. So this question just needs the whole time C equals N over V. But before we get there, let's think about what's going on. They are telling you I've got two containers, okay? In the first container, I have magnesium chloride, okay? And I have 50 cubic centimeters of magnesium chloride. And in the other container, I've got less. I've only got 30 cubic centimeters, but it is sodium chloride, okay? That's the first part. They tell you the volume, so you can think of um, two cups. I like to think of this as like cups of Oros. And they are telling you that the one has this concentration. So the concentration is like, how much Oros did you mix with the water? So this number is bigger than that number. This is 0 0,25 moles per cubic decimeter. This is 0 0,15. So I have a big volume of something that is quite concentrated. So let's color this in dark. This is like when you've put too much Oros in the cup and you're about to drink like a mountain of sugar, okay? But in this case, we're interested in the chloride ion. So I've got a big volume of a highly concentrated magnesium chloride, and I've got a small volume of a dilute, like if you're thinking about Oros, this is when you put a lot of water with a little bit of Oros. So I've got these two solutions, okay? And then it says, we've got these two solutions and we add them together. So we are going to end up in my cup, putting in the 50 cubic centimeters of the dark one and the 30 cubic centimeters of the light one. So this is what's happened. We've mixed these two together. And so now obviously, when we mix them together, they are going to... Um, mix with each other. They're not going to sit here as two layers, but in your mind, sometimes it helps to think of them as two layers. So the first thing that you have to realize in this question is now I had 50 cubic centimeters and 30 cubic centimeters. My new container has got 80 cubic centimeters. So that's the one thing that's going to happen. And I've mixed a strong solution with a slightly weaker solution. So now my concentration is going to be different, okay? We don't know what the concentration is. So we need to find out in the last part of the question the concentration of chloride ions. But before we get there, it says 
write down the balanced equation for the dissociation of magnesium chloride solid in water. So what happens is, what is dissociation? It's when you've got this nice salt. This is a salt with a cation and an anion. Okay, my cation is my Mg2 plus cation, and my anion is my chloride ion, Cl minus. Okay, so we took magnesium chloride, which is a solid white salt, okay, and then we added some water. This is just like dissolving ordinary table salt in water, which is in fact what's in this container over here. Okay, and then it splits up into the magnesium ion, magnesium 2 plus aqueous, plus Cl minus aqueous. So that is the balanced equation. It's not balanced yet. That is the equation for the dissociation. I took this solid and I put water, and the water molecules, because they're polar, separated out the cations and the anions. My problem here is, is that my equation is not actually balanced. You can see that magnesium is 2 plus because it's in the second column, okay? And chlorine only needs one electron to get to noble gas structure, so it's Cl minus. And you can see from the formula here, can you see it's MgCl2. So for every one magnesium ion, there are two chloride anions. So on this side, to balance this, I need 2Cl minus. So my mole ratio is here. One mole of magnesium chloride is equivalent to two moles of chloride ions. And this is important for the next part of the question, okay? Because it says to you here, calculate the concentration of chloride ions in this solution. So the magnesium chloride solid splits into the magnesium cation and two chloride anions in water. And the sodium chloride solution, the same similar thing is going to have happened when they made that second sodium chloride solution. Okay, you will have got one sodium aqueous ion and one chloride aqueous ion. So the mole ratio for sodium chloride is one mole of sodium chloride salt is equivalent to one mole of chloride ions in solution. So remember, if you get confused ever in a chemistry calculation, the most important thing to do is first find the moles, okay? So from this question and the C equals N over V formula, we can find the moles. So the first thing we can find the moles for is the magnesium chloride. So the concentration of magnesium chloride is equal to the number of moles per unit volume, okay? And we have the concentration is 0, 0,25, and that will be equal to the number of moles in 50 cubic centimeters. Now remember, convert your units. Remember that it is going to be dividing by a thousand, so we can write 50 times 10 to the negative 3 over here. And if you do some algebra, you will end up with, you will find the number of moles of magnesium chloride, okay? is going to be, if we put this in our calculator, 0, 0,0125 moles. Okay, so that is the number of moles of magnesium chloride. Note, I haven't said it's the chloride ions, it is the magnesium chloride. So I'm just first going to show you the cheap marks here. The second cheap marks is to take the concentration of sodium chloride, which is also given in the question, will be equal to the number of moles per unit volume. The concentration of sodium chloride is 0, 0,15. Okay, the volume of the sodium chloride is 30 cubic centimeters. So remember, we've got to convert that to cubic decimeters, so you divide by a thousand. So now my number of moles of sodium chloride in that solution is going to be 4,5 times 10 to the negative 3. Okay, so what we've now found out is in here, 
I've got 0, 0,0125 moles of magnesium chloride. And in my second one, I have got 4,5 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of sodium chloride. So that's what's in container 1, container 2, and then I put them all in container 3. Okay, so all my moles from container 1 plus all my moles from container 2 are now in container 3, but my total volume is now 80 cubic centimeters. But now the final tricky part of this question is going to come to you over here. One mole of magnesium chloride produces two moles of chloride ions. So in this question, the question tells you the concentration of magnesium chloride. It does not tell you the concentration of chloride ions, but the question asks you what is the concentration of chloride ions. So we have to say one mole of magnesium chloride is equivalent to two moles of chloride ions. So we take this number of moles of magnesium chloride and then we are going to double it because of the mole ratio and we will end up with, what is this, 0,025 moles of chloride ions. So the moles of chloride ions in here is double the moles of magnesium chloride. So this is 0, 0,025 moles of chloride ions. But we know that the mag sodium chloride concentration is equal to the chloride ion concentration. Okay, so we can easily take this number over here and this number over here is fine because the number of moles of sodium chloride is equivalent to the moles of chloride ions in this particular solution. So finally we know that in here we got 0, 0.025 moles of chloride ions from the magnesium chloride okay and we got 4,5 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of chloride ions from the sodium chloride. So my total moles of chloride ions, okay, is going to be those ones from the magnesium chloride ions, okay, the magnesium chloride, yeah, and the number of moles from the magnesium chloride, plus the number of moles from the sodium chloride. Remember, we're looking at the chloride ions now, so this is going to be 0, 0.025 plus 4,5 times 10 to the negative 3. And if you put that in your calculator, you should end up with 0, 0,0295 moles of chloride ions. Okay. Have we answered the question? No, not yet. Sad to say. Let me rub something out. What can I rub out? Let me rub out this over here. Okay. So now we are focused on the big container. We have chloride ions from the magnesium chloride and we have chloride ions from the sodium chloride and altogether my volume is going to be 80 cubic centimeters. So we are going to find the concentration of chloride ions is equal to the number of chloride ion moles over the volume. So here is my number of chloride ions. 0,0295 moles. What is my volume? Remember we added them together so it's now 80 cubic centimeters so we convert that to cubic decimeters and this is going to be equal to my concentration of chloride ions and if you put it in your calculator and you round off because it's the last step of the question the concentration of the chloride ions put the numbers in your calculator is going to be 0, 3, 7, and the unit of concentration is moles per cubic decimeter. So the most important thing from this question is to realize 
that the number of moles of the salt, okay, is not the same as the number of moles of the chloride ions. This is important because in a little while you will do acids and bases in grade 12, and in acids and bases in grade 12, there will be the same thing with what they call a polyprotic acid, where some acids have two H pluses, like sulfuric acid, and some have one, like hydrochloric acid. So the concentration of chloride ions is not the same as the concentration of the salt.